Hi, I'm Josh from Victory Camera, and today we're doing a video on a camera that I get asked about a lot, the Hasselblad X-Pan. This camera has developed a huge cult following and is one of the cameras I get asked about the most. The X-Pan was made uh, starting in 1998, and they fi finished the X-Pan 2 up in 2006, and it was unfortunately killed by environmental regulations. They didn't want to update the camera to comply with the new regulations, so they stopped making them. The X-Pan uh, is a collaboration with Fuji, but what I think that really means is that they took a Fuji and rebranded it. This camera is sold, was sold in other markets outside the US as the Fuji X-T1, and as far as I know, they're exactly the same except for the, the finish. The, the Fuji has a silver finish, and you can sometimes find a Fuji. They sell for less money. It's the same camera, just has a different finish. The X-Pan is a camera that I don't want to like, but I honestly really do. It's really a unique camera, and it's really good for what it does. It didn't sell great, and I think it was just too weird for the market uh, in 98 when these came out. It was a weird time for photography. Uh, digital was on the horizon, and people didn't really want to invest in film. They weren't really sure what was going on. People treated cameras differently. There they wasn't so much interest in the weird cameras. There was interest in cameras that performed well. People just weren't looking for a camera like this. It's an unusual camera, and I kind of think it was a design exercise from Fuji that, that some engineers were sitting around and saying, hey, let's do something cool. Fuji did a lot of that stuff in those days. They made a lot of cameras that didn't necessarily have a big market segment, but I think that they were thinking, well, we're selling so much film that we can afford to do some cool stuff with the cameras, and I really respect Fuji for doing that. Let's give a little tour of the camera. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the weirdest thing as far as the controls, you've got the ISO dial on the front, which I don't know why they did that, but it's kind of funky. You've got uh, shutter speeds up here on top, and it's got electronic shutter, so you do have auto exposure. Uh, you have exposure compensation, you have uh, motor drive with single and continuous if you need to take high speed pictures of your panoramas. This is really the magic switch here on the back that changes from panorama to regular 24 by 36. And the really cool thing about that with this camera is that you can go back and forth one frame on, one frame off without losing any film. It's not cropping, it's not wasting film. So if for whatever reason you want to do half your pictures, regular aspect ratio and half your pictures wide, you can do that. It has bracketing control on the back, which is sort of wacky. You can choose to do like one exposure at normal, one up, one stop, one down, one stop, which is a cool feature. I never use it. Uh, and then focus, we've got aperture on the lens. It's all pretty straightforward. Uh, here's the PC socket on the front and lens release. It's got this really nice built-in grip. Let's look inside the camera. The shutter is really cool. So here it is in, in crop mode and then you push this and there you've got your wide format. The wide format on this is 24 by 65 which is really wide. Brought out this wide lux just for comparison, and this is 24 by 56. This is the standard 45 millimeter lens on this camera. It's the lens that's normally seen on this in uh, 35 millimeter format that's slightly wide. In, in uh, wide format, that would be a very wide lens. There's also the 30 millimeter, which is a very coveted lens. You almost never see those. And the 90 millimeter, which is less coveted because most people don't want to do portraits on this kind of camera. The X-Pan is, is a rangefinder camera. You focus it by aligning the patch in the center of the frame. That would be just like a 7, Mamiya 7 or a Leica or any other rangefinder camera. Beyond the wide format, what I think is really noteworthy about this camera is just how, how sorted everything is and how easy to use it is. It's got, it's got a really nice grip on it. It feels really nice in the hand. It doesn't have any weird quirks. Um, everything is just super easy to use. And I kind of think it's interesting to compare it to Leica. And I think that this is in a way like a, beyond the wide format, it's like a modernized Leica. Like if Leica had started with a clean slate and said, let's make a modern rangefinder, uh, they might have come up with something similar to this. And it looks very different from the Leica, but it's got the it's got uh, the auto exposure, which I guess they have in the 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 M7. Um, it's got the built-in motor drive. It's got a hinged back. It has a larger 
viewfinder that you can easily see the whole frame with. Uh, it's just a very easy to use camera. You could actually use this camera, nobody's going to, but you could actually use this camera as a 35 millimeter Leica alternative. It's not drastically bigger, I guess it is bigger. Uh, the big thing is that the lenses are slow. This is 45 f4 versus a 35 1.4 Voigtlander here. Camera takes standard button cell batteries, which is nice, nothing weird. The X-Pan is really the only camera that's like it. Uh, it beyond the being able to change formats, which is kind of cool, it's the only high quality uh, non-swing lens 35 millimeter camera. There, there are various cameras for, for medium format, like from other cameras from Fuji and from Linhoff and from some others. But for a non-swing lens, this is really all you got for 35 millimeter. There's some stuff from Lomo and there's some other like value brands, but they, they're not really in the same league as this. And so I brought out this Wide Lux to really show you uh, how different the competition is. I did another video on this. So if you dig this camera, you, you might want to look at the other video. This uh, is not taking a picture in a single image. You have this lens that rotates around which is cool, I love these cameras, they're awesome, but the X-Pan is so much easier to use. You get three shutter speeds with this, you have to hold the camera steady. If you're doing a slow shutter speed, you have to use a tripod because the exposure takes significantly longer than the time. This is, this is a fifteenth of a second, I don't know, that probably was about four seconds, five seconds, or something like that. Interestingly, this actually has a wider aspect ratio than the Wide Lux. The Wide Lux was made to cover giant spaces. It's like picture Grand Canyon, giant horizon, things like that. And it's got an angle of view of 140 degrees. The X-Pan with this lens does 71 degrees, much narrower, and even with the big 30 millimeter lens, it only does 94. So you're covering, it's not really made so much for like your big expansive landscapes. I think it's made more for the way people use them now, just like having a picture that's very wide. So it's great for street photography and um, just your general shooting. It's, it's also, the only wide format 35 that has coupled focusing, so you could focus close with a rangefinder. So it's really great for portraits, street photography, just general shooting where you want that crazy wide format. According to the Hasselblad website, uh, 16,800 of these were made. Though I think that just count, uh, I think that just covers the Hasselblad version. They may have sold more Fujis. And then they came out with the X-Pan 2, and they only sold about 5,000 of those. Uh, it has a couple of improvements. I, I never see the X-Pan 2s. I think they're really rare. The people who bought them, I think, held on to them. The most, the nicest, well, it's got two significant upgrades. One is that you have front and rear flash sync. So if you want to shoot action with this, the rear sh flash sync is really cool. And it has exposure information in the viewfinder. Otherwise, it's the same camera. These cameras are expensive, and there's no getting around that. Um, whether it's worth the money, you gotta, you gotta figure that out for yourself. One thing that I came up with in the course of making this is for the kind of camera it is, it, it really has no weird quirks, it has no limitations. You, you could use it for whatever you wanna use it for. Uh, the Wide Lux, for example, you have to uh, wind it before you change the shutter speed. It's got weird stuff. Uh, this guy you can just blast away, and you can blast away at, in the normal uh, 24 by 36, or you can go wide. It's it's a great camera. It's expensive, but it's a beautiful camera, and reluctantly I say I like this camera a lot. Uh, I'm Josh from Victory Camera. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.